sing It's Good to Be Here Today. Let's all stand, take your hymn book, and turn to hymn number 147. Hymn 147, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Hymn number 147. On that first. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. certainly glad to have you with us this Mother's Day morning. And again, we're certainly glad that you ladies could join us, and we're even glad the guys came. But anyway, we are certainly glad that uh, we, we thank the Lord for moms. Obviously, none of us in the room would be here without one, and uh, we thank the Lord for that, that uh, we can look back. Now, let's be honest. I mean, not everybody had as good as an opportunity as others in that area, but listen, uh, no matter where, no matter how it all went down, you have a mother, and for that, you ought to be thankful because you wouldn't be here without her, okay? Now, I'm not saying everything was peachy keen, uh, so to speak, but I can say this. Uh, for one thing, we can thank the Lord that he brought us into this world and he used a mom, and for that, we are grateful. And for so many, uh, in, like in my case, I did. I had a wonderful mother, and this is always such a good time to reflect on that. And uh, I kind of like, um, I'm, I'm not a real big, uh, you know, special day guy, you know? Because I feel like the card companies and everybody's just getting rich off of us. But Mother's Day's a good one. Mother's Day's a good one. And Father's Day's is even better. Okay? It's coming, right? That, that's coming in June, okay? So, but anyway. No, we're so glad that you are with us today. Thank you for being a part of the service. And we're going to do our best to honor you at the... Um, uh, not only do we have a little gift for all the moms, but we also have a table full of gifts that we're going to raffle off. And uh, some of the ladies were pretty, pretty we were honest last year about not giving them an opportunity to win some prizes because the guys always get a few gifts, you know. And so we thought, well, we better, we better do that, you know, happy wife, mother, whatever that goes. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to keep everybody happy, okay? So we'll have a good time today with that. Anyway, thank you for being here. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to invite Christ in our midst, and we'll continue with our service. Father, we thank you for just all you do for us. We are such a blessed people. Uh, Lord, we are grateful for just how you work and move in our midst and in our lives. And we just ask, dear God, that you would once again uh, meet our needs today. Thank you for every mom. Thank you, Father, for just, Father, everyone that's here even, Lord. We're so grateful, Father, that you brought folk into the church to be encouraged by the message today, to be, Father, moved by the music, Lord, to just be inspired by fellowshipping with one another. We ask, dear God, that you'd help us. Now, Lord, may we open our hearts and minds to you and allow you, Father, just to move in our midst and bring about change as necessary. We love you. We thank you for all you've done for us. We give to you the glory and the honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated.
Take your hymn book and turn to hymn number 159. Hymn 159, Blessed Be the Name. Hymn 159, on that first. All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme who gave His Son Take a moment and shake a few hands. like a cat. Has anybody got a heating pad? <laughs> wow. I've been having problems with my heel a little bit, you know, and so 
I've taken massive, do massive doses of uh, Tylenol. No, I'm teased. But anyway, it had. But again, the problem. So I was trying to be careful coming up those steps. Normally, I just float up them. <laughs> so you know, I have to blame it on something, right? <laughs> All right. No, we are so glad that you're part of the service. We're going to be taking up our offering, and um, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm looking at these guys. I don't know. That's a rough looking crowd today. They even got smiles on. They still don't look good. They just can't win. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't win. Not with me up here, you can't, right? So I just got to be careful when I get up here because I don't want them to take the mic and, you know, bust a move or something. All right. Brother Robido, I want you to come on up. Brother Robido is going to be, um, uh, we are praying for a building in the Montrose uh, Fairlawn area. He's going to be, uh, we're going to be sending him out to start a church from Community Baptist and if you know of anyone or have heard anything about properties or buildings for lease or rent or anything, maybe you you've even know of a senior center that's out there or some kind of uh, uh, bank or something that has a space for rent or lease or something like that, you let us know because we are diligently seeking a place so that we can begin that ministry. And we'd like to start it much sooner than later. I talked to a church planner this week, and uh, he's been talking to me about church planning for about six months three to six months now, and I got to talking to him, and he said, yeah, I said, well, when do you plan on starting your church? And he said, well, I think we'll actually, uh, the kickoff date, the, the official kickoff date will be next September. And I said, what? You, you guys have found a building. You have the preacher. What are we waiting on? Brother Robdo said to me when he came to my office, he said, well, we believe the Lord's moving us in this direction, Pastor. I said, praise the Lord. Me too. I'm all for it. He said, we'd like to get started as soon as possible so we have good weather to knock doors and get out into the community. I said, that's how I feel too. Amen. So nonetheless, you be praying because we want to get started immediately, as soon as possible. By June, we'd like to see this thing moving forward. And uh, we'll do our best to encourage him, support him, and also be a part of just their outreach and trying to get him prospects and doing all of the work that we can to be a blessing. I know it's Mother's Day. We've got to move quickly. But I wanted to share that with you. He's going to come pray for us now and ask the blessing on the offering. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house on this Mother's Day. Thank you for the beautiful weather and the safety in traveling here. And I pray you would please bless the services today. May you be honored and glorified in all that's done, and especially in this offering. Lord, I pray you would please use what is given today to help the ministry and the church here move forward. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, if you're able to stand, let's all stand again. We're going to do our course today. Lead me to some soul today. Oh, teach me, Lord, just what to say.
of April, but boy, the work never ends. There's always people in need of Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and sing this again, and let's kind of almost pray it to ourselves as we move forward today. Lead me to some soul today. Oh, teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost in sin. Surely you must find Keep on the firing line There are many dangers that we all must face If we die of fighting it is no disgrace Coward in the service he will find no place So keep on the firing line You must fight, be brave against all evil Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. When we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. Praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the firing line. When we see the souls that we have helped to win, leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin, with the shout of welcome we will all march in. So keep on the firing line. You must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. You must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. It's a great Mother's Day song. <laughs> keep on the firing line, moms. <laughs> yep, we're going to make it work one way or the other, right? Mothers of teenagers understand why some animals eat their young. <laughs> yeah, they got it figured out. You know that a toddler can do more in one unsupervised minute than most people can do in a day? <laughs> uh, one mom said, you know, I love it when I find myself screaming, stop screaming at my kids. That's how I teach them irony. You got to know what irony is. Okay, so anyway, the moms know, but the dads didn't, I could tell. But anyway, a police recruit was asked during the exam, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? He said, I'd call for backup. <laughs> One mother said, well, silence is golden. Well, unless you have kids, then silence is suspicious. 
And then the question's always asked, why is the house so neat on Mother's Day? Because mom spent all day Saturday cleaning it. <laughs> well, take your Bible, turn over to the book of 1 Kings. We're going to look at just a couple quick verses, and then we're going to kind of move forward. I want to just be an encouragement to moms today. And um, you definitely need encouragement, don't you? But being a mom's not easy, is it? It's work. 1 Kings, look at chapter 14, beginning in verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 21. We're going to just kind of skim through some verses, and I just want to make a point in the introduction here. The Bible says in 1 Kings 14, 21, it says, And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nama an Ammonitis. Look at chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned... And don't, don't, don't hold me to all these names. I'm just going to say Abijam. I like how that sounds. Over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Mekah, the daughter of Abishalom. In 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 42. Jehoshaphat was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign. Verse 42, chapter 22. And he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Ezebah, the daughter of Shilhai. When we move to 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 26, the Bible says, Two and twenty years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Amri, king of Israel. In 2 Kings chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, In the seventh year, excuse me, in the second year of jo Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. He was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehadon of Jerusalem. And finally, just for the sake of reinforcement, 2 Kings 15, 1 and 2, in the twenty and seventh year of Jeroboam, king of Israel began Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. I, I believe we see a pattern emerging here. We have the kings of Israel and the kings even of Judah being listed at times, and what we see is that moms are being listed with them. Now, why in the world would God take the time to list all these moms? Unless moms are pretty significant and pretty important. On April the 9th, 18, 1982, a woman by the name of Angela Cavallo lived in Lawrenceville, Georgia. She experienced something that no mother would ever want to experience. Her then teenage son, Tony, was had a 1964 Chevy Impala, and he had it jacked up in the driveway. He removed a rear tire, and he was working on the suspension. All of a sudden, a neighborhood, kid, a neighborhood child came running into the kitchen and said to Angela, there'd been an accident. She rushed out to find Tony pinned under the car. Something had been stuck, and in trying to loosen it, he had rocked the car off of the jack. Now he was caught in one of the rear wheel wells. All she could see of him was just from his waist down. Fortunately, those old Chevys were big old cars with a lot of room around the wheels, and as a result, Tony wasn't immediately crushed, but he was out cold. We'll get back to that later. <laughs> I read something, it was called, What a Mother Taught Me, What My Mother Taught Me. I like this. It says, My Mother Taught Me Religion. 
When I spilled grape juice on the carpet, she instructed, you better pray that stain will come out of the carpet. (laughs) She taught me logic from her decisive words. Because I said so, that's why. My mother taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. She taught me irony. Keep laughing. I'll give you something to cry about. My mother taught me about stamina. You'll sit there till all the spinach is finished. She taught me about weather. It looks as if a tornado swept through your room. She said, my mother taught me the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. She taught me about behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. (laughs) said, She taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in the world who don't have a wonderful mom like you do. (laughs) Envy. Listen, I just want to encourage moms today. And in doing so, I just want to share four directives. Real simple thoughts, okay? Real simple. I'm going to have a word of prayer and we're going to get right to them. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. We thank you again for the time that we have together. And Lord, we know that uh, mom is a very, very vital and important place. Uh, Lord, we are so grateful, Father, for just uh, the moms that you've given us. We're grateful, Father, for the opportunity that we have now to honor moms today in the service. And we ask that you would be glorified and honored as well. Uh, Father, bless each and every one of us in this room. Lord, may our hearts be stirred. May we be moved and encouraged by your word and just by these simple thoughts. And Lord, be glorified now in it. Lord, if there is somebody that doesn't know Christ, the Savior, Lord, I do pray that they would find him before it's eternally too late. We'll thank you, we'll praise you for it in Christ's name, amen. First of all, let me just give you the first one, the first directive. Never underestimate your influence, Mom. Never underestimate your influence. Now, the word influence is defined as the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Again, it's, it's, influence is defined as the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible, uh, Paul, uh, Paul the Apostle is speaking to Timothy, his son in the faith, and he says, when I call to remembrance, when I start thinking about this, Timothy, I think about the unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in in thee also. He says, listen, this... He talks about unfeigned faith. What he's talking about is a faith that is authentic, a faith that is is genuine. And he says, that genuine and authentic faith that you possess, Timothy, I know where you got it. You got it from your grandma, your mother. You got it from those two. It's been passed down to you. And that's exactly what every mom is doing, is passing something down to their children. Don't underestimate your influence. See, more is caught than taught. you got to be careful, don't we, moms? A little girl was trying very hard to care for her mother. Her mom was very sick, and she did everything to make her mom feel more comfortable in bed, and she quietly slipped on into the kitchen. She had seen her mom make hot tea for her father when he was sick, and so she set out to do the same thing for her mother now that mom was sick as well. With a cup and saucer in her hand, she took the tea into the bedroom where her mom was obviously touched and just overwhelmed by the consideration of the daughter. And um, she showered her daughter with praise. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much for that tea, sweetheart. I can't believe you did that for me. Just really just showering. I didn't know you could make tea. This is so unbelievable. The little girl beamed with pride as she took her mom, uh, as she, she told her mom how she made it. She said, you know, I boiled the water and tea leaves together just like you always do, Mommy. 
The mother listened attentively while sipping the tea, and the little girl continued her story by saying, but I couldn't find that little strainer thing, so I used the fly swatter. Her mom nearly spit out the tea, of course, and she said, you used a fly swatter? And she said, oh, oh, mommy, oh, mommy, it's okay, it's okay. You don't have to worry. I used the old fly swatter so I wouldn't mess up the new one. <laughs> More is caught than taught. Hey, they're watching, mom. They're watching and they're learning not just by what you say, but what you do. And in this case, that little girl had just simply wanted to follow in the footsteps of her mother and show the same kind of compassion that she showed. Abraham Lincoln was well known for being and having total abstinence from alcohol. According to one well-known story, he was once offered a drink by a colonel in the military. And um, he responded by telling the man that when his mother was on her deathbed, that uh, she had summoned him, she had called him to her and he was only nine years old at the time, just a little boy, and she made him promise that he would never take a drink. He then said to this colonel, he said, I promised my mother that I'd never that 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 I never would take a drink, and up to this hour I've kept this promise. Would you advise me to break that promise? The colonel said, No, no, sir, Mr. Lincoln, no, no, Mr. Lincoln, I, I wouldn't have you do it for the world. It's one of the best promises you've ever made. And at that time, he said, I'd give $1,000 today if I'd made my mother a promise like that and had kept it as you have done. Boy, moms, I'll tell you what, sometimes it seems like they're not listening. It seems like they really don't have their ears open to you, but I'm telling you, they're picking it up. You have more influence than you will ever, ever, ever dream. Do not underestimate your influence in the life of your child or children. Number two, never downplay your role. Never downplay your role. We noted in the introduction the importance of mothers. It seems that in the Bible that God is forever uh, making sure that he mentions mom with the particular king. Now again, there's a reason for that. Obviously, mom plays a vital role. Obviously, mom has influenced significantly that child. And that role that she plays is important, to say the least. In 1 Kings, turn if you would to 1 Kings chapter 2. Oh no, wait, take that back. I'm jumping ahead. Don't do that yet. You can do that if you like, but we'll get there later, not sooner. But we noted this in the introduction, how important it was. Moms, that is. Again, so much emphasis is placed on a person's financial contribution to the family these days. It seems like our world emphasizes that more than about anything else. I was reading through some comments of some men in their position. A particular mom had gone into the hospital. She'd had a good-paying job, and they'd had their first child, and uh, they had dreams of ultimately both working and both accumulating wealth and both having things and not having to worry about, uh, you know, rubbing nickels together just to make it and things. And all of a sudden, after spending about 12 weeks at home, because of uh, leave that her work had given her, very, very, very generous, by the way, she came to the conclusion that she did not want to go back to work, that she'd prefer to stay home with her child. And this gentleman was writing to a therapist and a psychologist, so to speak, a dear Abby, if you would, and saying, what am I going to do? I've lost respect for my wife because I feel like she's taken a step down now. She's given up. Given up? He literally used those words. She's given up. What, because she wants to stay home with her children? That's giving up because she puts mom in a position where she thought, I think for me, I'm going to do this. And all of a sudden, that's so bad. I have to tell you right now, the world as a, t as a whole sometimes doesn't always view motherhood or view being a mom, especially a stay-at-home mom, as being very, very positive. They look at it very critically, very negatively. I, I, um, women are afraid to say sometimes that they're a stay-at-home mom either because they're afraid they're going to be looked down upon criticized, being considered lazy, good for nothing. I'm telling you what, if you've chosen to stay home and you've made that decision, my goodness, please don't be, feel somehow that you are a second-hand citizen. Don't downplay your role. And listen, that doesn't matter whether you're a working mother or whether you're a stay-home mom. Let me tell you something. Outside of being a wife, the most important role that you have is that of motherhood. 
Your job does not take precedence over your children. And you know that and I know that. And listen, we cannot downplay the role of, our, of being a mom. Yeah, you say, well, I want to support, I want to, I want to contribute to the home. That's fine. But do not take away from those kids. I don't care how much you work outside the home, you better put a priority and place priority on those children. Man, listen, don't ever downplay your role as a mom. Well, I'll tell somebody where I work. I just don't want to tell them, a uh, mom's just kind of, uh, no, moms are important. Moms are, are vital. Man, it's crazy. Don't downplay your role as a mom. Well, you know, no, I don't. It's awesome. Be proud of being a mother. Whether you're a, a, a working mom, whether you're at home working, it doesn't matter. You be proud of being a mom. Because you are investing in the gen next generation. You are making the difference today. A little boy forgot his lines in Sunday school, <clears throat> a Sunday school presentation. And his mother was kind of right in the front row. I mean, you know how it is. People, Baptists, love sitting in the back until there's children up front. And then they all move to the front. And, and you know, they kill each other to get up there. And so she was right in the front row. Now, she probably sat in the front row all the time. Don't, you know. But anyway, um, she sat in the front row, and she did that because her, her child was struggling just a little bit with some of the lines. And so she gestured, and, and, and she formed some of the words kind of silently. And the little kid's like, he couldn't get it, right? Just could not get it. His son, and, and her son's mind just went totally blank. And she's trying to word the words, you know, just would mouth the words, but he just couldn't get it. Finally, she leaned forward and she whispered the cue, I am the light of the world. The child beamed and with great feeling and a loud, clear voice said, my mother is the light of the world. <laughs> hey, don't downplay your role. You are the light of the world to your children. You really are. Being a mom is not something that you should ever downplay. It's a huge role in your life. And, and no matter what your circumstance or situation is, you be proud of being a mom. It's big time. It's big time. Number three, kind of goes along with the first two. Of course, we already said that we're to never underestimate our influence, never downplay your role, but number three, never doubt your importance again. And I know we've touched on it a little bit generally, but never doubt your importance. Again, now, 1 Kings chapter 2, here we are now. 1 Kings chapter 2, you might be there, if not, go ahead and make a move over that way. Boy, your value, your importance is huge. In 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, we're going to see how important a mother was in the eyes of her son, her son being Solomon the king. The Bible says Bathsheba, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 19, Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her. Now again, Adonijah had gone to Bathsheba. Why? Because she, he knew that she had the ear of the king. It's mom, right? Mom has influence. Ah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne and caused the seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. So he pulls up a seat and puts her right there to his right. Okay, mom, come on down. We're going to set you up here. It's my mom. This is mom. Then she said, I desire one small petition of thee. I pray thee, say me, not nay. Don't say no to me, son, please. Don't say no, okay? Just, I, I'm asking you this, don't say no, please. And the king said unto her, ask on, my mother, for I will not say thee nay. I want you to see the attitude of Solomon. Solomon is now the king of Israel. Solomon has servants that wait on him hand and foot. Solomon can have anyone or anything in his kingdom. He can do whatever he chooses. He has great power and authority. And still mom steps up and says, son, I have a request for you. I'm asking you, please don't say no to me. Mom, I would never say no to you. You come right on up. 
She had access to the king. She, she had the ear of the king. She had influence and power with the king. This was mom. Never doubt your importance. Never doubt it, mom. Dr. G. Campbell Morgan, a great preacher, he had four sons. And they were all preachers also. Someone once came into the drawing room and all the family was there and they thought they would see what Howard, one of the sons, was made of. So they asked him this question. They said, Howard, who's the greatest preacher in your family? Howard had a great admiration for his father, of course. And he looked straight across at him. And then he, without even a moment's hesitation, he said, Mother. Who's the greatest preacher in the family? Looking at dad, mother. Why? Because mom was so important. Man, he remembers those times growing up in the home where when dad was out working and doing what he had to do, mom was there giving the word of God, making maybe a meal or preparing things for the next night of the day or whatever she might have been doing. He, he remembered how she took the word of God and opened up the Bible and read the scriptures and helped them memorize the scriptures and did those kind of things. He said, wait a second, dad's a mighty man of God and dad's a wonderful preacher, but mom taught us more than dad ever could. She was the greatest preacher. Man, I'll tell you what, never doubt your importance, Mom. Never doubt your importance. And finally, number four. Not only do we have to be encouraged to never underestimate your influence, never downplay your role, never doubt your importance, but never surrender or give up. Never surrender or give up. You know, there's nothing, as we said, that's easy about being a mom. But I do want to encourage you by saying it's worth it. It doesn't always seem worth it in the moment. <laughs> but it is. There's going to be times in your motherhood that, well, you'll feel your efforts are in vain. What I do really doesn't matter. Where it'll seem all hope may be lost. But never run up the white flag. Never give up. On August the 16th, 1987, Northwest Airlines Flight 225 crashed just after taking off from Detroit Airport. It killed 155 people. One person survived. That's amazing, isn't it? One person survived. Four-year-old a four-year-old from Tempe, Arizona, named Cecilia. When rescuers found Cecilia, Cecilia they, they really didn't believe that she had even been on the airplane at all. Investigators kind of assumed that she had been a passenger in one of the cars on the highway into which the airliner crashed. But when the passenger registry was reviewed, they saw that Cecilia had checked in and was on board. Cecilia survived because even as the plane was falling out of the sky, her mother, Paula, unbuckled her own seatbelt, got down on her knees in front of her daughter, and wrapped her arms and body around Cecilia and never let go. Cecilia is alive today because of a mother who would not give up even though it appeared all was lost. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I, I can't understand the broken heart of a mother. I'm not a mother. I can't understand the heartache and, and, and just the the way a mom feels and thinks. I never carried a child in my womb for nine months. And, and any guy that says he understands is a fool. He doesn't. But to you moms, I want you to know, as difficult as it gets and as hard as it is to continue to hope and believe and trust, and it's worth it. Don't quit. Don't give up on your kids. No matter how difficult the situation appears, 
Don't quit. Don't give up. On April the 9th, 1982, we talked about Angela Cavallo. Again, there in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Her son Tony had been working on his 1964 Chevy Impala. He had it jacked up in the driveway. And of course, he had removed those tires. He was working on the suspension when all of a sudden she got some horrible news from a little neighbor boy who had come into the kitchen and was told her that there had been an accident. As she rushed out, of course, she found Tony pinned under the wheel well. Fortunately, because those cars are so large, there was room around the wheel well, and although he was out cold, he wasn't completely crushed. Hollering to the neighbor kid to get help, Angela grabbed the side of the car with both hands. And with all her strength, she lifted. The Associated Press account said that she raised the car four inches, just enough to take the pressure off of her son. She recalls nothing about the rescue, but while Angela continued to hold the car up, they say for five minutes, two neighbors reinserted the jack and dragged the boy out. Of course, Tony was rushed to the hospital where, after test and examination, doctors miraculously found no brain injuries. He was released back to his mom's care where he fully recovered. See, this mom had saved her son's life by lifting a car with her bare hands. <laughs> Do you know, the truth is, Mom, you all have to be superheroes, don't you? To do what you do, you have to virtually be a superhero. May I encourage dads here to never take your wife for granted if she's a mother in that realm. Don't assume that she's not as valuable as you are. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be my wife for nothing. Not only does she have to put up with me, but she works a lot harder than I do. She's more busy, I think, than I could ever be. And just because your children have grown up doesn't mean you're not busy, is it, Mom? Because now as a grandparent, you find yourself being pulled in so many other directions. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It's made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It's endless and unselfish and enduring come what may, for nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It's patient and forgiving when all others are forsaking. And it never fails or falters, even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when the world around condemns, and it glows when all the beauty of the, uh, uh, with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gems. It's far beyond defining. It defies all explanation. It still remains a secret like the mysteries of creation. A many splendored miracle man cannot understand and another wondrous evidence of God's tender guiding hand. The love of a mother. What can I say? It changes a child. It transforms a community. And it upholds a nation. Never underestimate your influence, Mom. Never downplay your role. Never doubt your importance. And never surrender, give up. 2,000 years ago, we saw an act of love that, well, surpassed all acts of love. We're reminded of it in the Word of God as we 
Read about Jesus Christ, who was Emmanuel, God with us, who made his way to earth and took his place on a cruel, rugged cross where they drove the nails in his hands and his feet and took his very life. You say, an act of love? Yes. Because he didn't end up on that cross because of any ill that he had done. He ended up on that cross because of our sin. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. What an act of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What love the Father had for you and I. What love our Creator had for us. So much that He literally came to earth, became a man, and took His place on Calvary to pay for our sin so that we could be restored and redeemed. I wonder, if you ever saw yourself as a sinner? We live in a culture and a society today where it's easy for people to get the impression that, well, we may not all agree on what's right and wrong, but we can find truth from our own perspective. We, we come to the conclusion that this is right or wrong based on our own perception. But what we have to remember is that there is only one creator, God, and he gave us a book called the Bible that outlines his thoughts, gives us his mind on the issue. He tells us from the word of God what truth is, what right and wrong are. And it doesn't matter what our culture says, it doesn't matter what the society believes, what you think even, or what I believe. What matters is what he says. And can I tell you that the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What that means is literally none of us can measure up to his perfect standard, and his standard is perfection. Oh, I'm a good person. Compare yourself to Jesus, please. When you compare yourself, that's not fair. He was God. Exactly. And that's why the Bible tells us that there's no way that you and I could ever do anything that would earn God's favor because we can never be what God is, perfect. But in order to dwell with Him, we must be perfect. And the only thing that will correct our imperfection is His perfect sacrifice on Calvary and precious blood that was shed. And when that is applied to your life and my life, when it's applied to our account, then our sin is washed away. We're made clean. And we can then dwell in His presence one day in heaven. What love to take His place on Calvary, to literally be mocked, maligned, and mistreated for us. What a heart God had. What love he demonstrated. Have you ever saw yourself as a sinner? Can I tell you, if you have, I want you to know the solution is none other than Jesus Christ the Savior. That he literally, as we said, took your place. And if you'll invite him into your life and accept what he did on Calvary as payment for your sin, he will wash your sin away too. He'll apply that to your account. And when God reviews it one day in heaven, he'll say, it's been paid in full. You owe no sin debt any longer. Paid in full. And I'm glad that my sin's been paid in full. I'm not saying that I'm not a sinner. I still am. I mess up yet. But when God sees me, he sees me through that precious, perfect blood that was shed for me. He sees me clean and perfect through Christ and in Christ. 
And you know what? You can have that same opportunity. And he opens his arms to you. And he says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You come to him today. Invite him into your life. Allow him to be your savior. Trust him today. And you will never regret it. Because no one loves you like Jesus. As much as moms love, and they do, there's no love like Jesus's. Moms, never underestimate your influence. Never downplay your role. Never doubt your importance. Never, ever surrender or give up. What a perfect example we have in Jesus Christ. He never gave up on us, did he? I want you to know he won't give up on you either. Father, we come to you. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. And we're so grateful, Father, for just the simplicity of your word. And we ask, Father, that you would just work in our lives, that you'd move in our midst. Lord, there may be those who have yet to receive and accept you as, your, as their Lord and Savior. What a tragedy it would be, Lord, to come to the, the house of God and then to leave without the God of the house. I pray, dear Lord, that you would just convict of sin. And we recognize ourselves as the sinners we are. Help us to understand and realize, Lord, that we are in need then of the Savior, Jesus. That that's why he came 2,000 years ago, to pay for our sin, to take our place, to become our substitute. And Father, today there may be those in our midst that need to trust and receive Jesus as their Savior that have yet to settle their soul salvation and their eternal destination. Father, I pray to your God that they would do that today. And they simply need to see your precious word, the, those promises that you've given us. They will give us confidence. You said, these things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Father, those things you've written can give us the, the, the literal hope we need, the confidence we need to continue to face life and navigate through this world in which we live, to do it with confidence and strength. Father, help us, Lord, to be willing to trust and receive you if we haven't already. And if we have, may we continue to depend upon you. Lord, for the moms today, may you give them courage to stand up every day, fight the good fight of faith, to take the positions they need to, not just in the home, but outside the home, to be an example, not only in their faith, but just in their practice and everyday life. May you give them courage to just face the culture, courage to face their children, courage even at times to stand up and say, listen, we've got to do this no matter what. Oh, Lord, help us, Father, just to, to be the men and women of God we ought to be. I pray you bless every mom today now, meet their needs, and may they, Father, have a renewed vision for their children and their home and family. And may they just, Father, say, I'm never going to give up on my kids. I'm going to keep fighting for them and their futures. We'll thank you. We'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Let's all stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed today. The song says, just as I am, without one plea. Just come as you are. You don't know for sure heaven's your home. Settle it. Why wait? Why take an, a chance? Why do that? If you and I were seated today, across the table in your house. And I looked you in the eye and I said, listen, can I ask you a question? You say, yes. And I said, if you die today, are you 100% sure where you'd spend eternity? Do you know that heaven would be your home? How would you respond? You'd say, well, yeah, I think it'd be heaven. Well, why do you think that? Well, I'm a pretty good person. Well, remember, a pretty good person compared to who? To me, maybe, yeah. To the neighbor, sure. To a person we read about in the news, I'm sure. But what about Jesus, how you fare with him? Well, he's God, he's perfect, exactly. My friend, that's how you need to be to be in God's presence one day. And the Lord, has, God had sent his son for you. You can know today that heaven's your home, not because you believe you're something, but because you know what he did for you. He died for me on Calvary. He rose again the third day. He paid for my sin. And he's my savior. And I'm trusting only him to get me there. 
no one or nothing else but Jesus. Come on, won't you settle it? I don't know for sure today if I died, I'd go to heaven. Come on, let somebody take a Bible and show you how you can know. Won't you let them? Mom, do you know for sure? If you don't know for sure, how are you going to tell your kids how to be sure? You've got a responsibility, don't you? A huge responsibility. An overwhelming task in some, to some degree. That's why you almost have to be a superhero. you just got to be a superhero. You're going to need God's power and strength to do that. A supernatural power. We're certainly glad you could be with us. If you'd please be seated, I think we have a few uh, gifts we're going to give away here very quickly. And again, we want to honor our mothers. Again, I just want to wish each and every mom happy Mother's Day. And uh, we are so honored that you would join us and be a part of the service. I'm sure Brother Josh is going to share a little bit more about that. So I'm going to step aside. All right, very good. We are going to take just a few moments, and we do have a few gifts. And uh, I will give some instruction here in just a moment. Uh, for those journals that we were handing out to all the moms in attendance today. Uh, but if you could bring one of those gifts on down, I'm just going to have these guys. We have a couple of dads that are going to help pass these out. A dad of three and a dad-to-be. Yes, right around the corner there. And uh, so I have everything that I need right here. What are we? Oh, starting with some chocolate. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, so I have... Oh, hold on. I, I, saw, I saw some names on these tickets, and I didn't mean to look at that. So, uh, And there's good reason for that. There were some instructions there. Uh, but I've got one. Didn't it's, I don't know who did this. We're about to find out. But they ripped it on purpose. They ripped the corner. They knew it would just attach. It would stick to my fingers here. Uh, here we go. Here, we're going to run these numbers through. I'm going to start with the whole number. So look at that ticket. Grab that ticket that you got on the way in. Five nine nine six seven <laughs> seven five. Who is that? Who is it? Come on down. Yes, very good. We've got some chocolate. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm going to leave that ticket to the side. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, we have another one. What do we have here, Brother Brad? What do we got? 24 piece set. This is good. Oh, the glass. Very good. Okay. I'm going to start with the last four digits on the ticket here. Six, seven, one, nine. Six, seven, one, nine. Oh, yes. No way. Is that Mrs. Parker back there? Oh, well, congratulations. Wonderful. She won the 24 piece glass set. Yes. Yes. Oh, very good. We're all into our water bottles these days, and these are the fancy ones. These are very fancy, yes. All right, let's get another one here. Six, seven, one, eight. Six, seven, one, eight. In the room, maybe not. Uh-oh, I do have a note on the back. I'm so Devin in the nursery, serving in the nursery. Okay, so we'll hold that aside, keep the ticket there. Yes. We didn't want to punish those ladies. We're thankful that they're working in the nurseries. We're grateful. That is a wonderful thing. Oh, this is very soft. I know. I didn't try it out, but I did touch it, and it is very soft. A very nice blankie here for some mom in the room. And uh, let's see here. Six, seven, seven, six. Anybody in the room? Oh, yes, very good. We've got the blanket. It's coming to you. Congratulations. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, a round of applause. We have another on its way. Oh, and we'll run it back. Another 24-piece set. Uh, oh. I, I really like those. Okay. <laughs> so I got two of them. <laughs> like yes, I hand it right over to them on the way out. Yes. Here we go. We've got a number. 
And it's set at 6716. In the room? Oh, yes, in the back once again. Very good. Congratulations. I've got four tickets and the one that we kept, so five that we've given away so far. Some more chocolate. Some more chocolate. All right. Now, oh, didn't we do this number already? No, 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 no. Six, seven. Six, seven. Six, seven, six, seven. Anybody? I do have a note. Oh, okay. Name on there. Yes, Miss Jeannie, thank you. She's got her name on there just in case. Just in case. Congratulations. Wonderful. And another gift. Oh, this is very good. Very practical gift. Yes. A tool bag. It's not a tool bag, Brother Don. No, sir. It's not a tool bag. It's an insulated. insulated bag. Keep it cool. Keep it hot. Yeah. All right. Six, seven, zero, two. Right here in the middle. Six. Yes, very good. Mrs. Becker right over. Yes. Wonderful. Mrs. Becker's never hauling food around or anything, so that would never get used. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Happy Mother's Day. Cast iron. Very heavy. Very, very heavy. Be careful. All right. Six. Seven, two, three. Six, seven, two, three. Really? Yes. Mrs. Harris jumping out of her seat back there, ready to go. Congratulations. Is that it over there? That is it. That is, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that beforehand. That somewhat anticlimactic there, but that is pretty amazing. We want to thank you as a whole. Community Baptist Temple moms, we're grateful for everything that you do. And sometimes we put you through it. But we're glad to be able to honor you today. And we do, as just a way of saying thank you, we have a gift on the way out. Perhaps, maybe some of you received a gift on the way in. Uh, they were at the table down there. But if you didn't get a gift on the way in, the ushers are posted at the door. And on the way out, I would like for you to receive one of these gifts, um, a, a notebook, a journal, and a lot of good information Good helps, and you can take the time to look at that, and I'm sure you'll be encouraged and blessed by it. But again, one more time, I say on behalf of Community Baptist Temple, myself here, thank you. We, we're appreciative of all that you do, moms. I, I have had a wonderful experience. I have a wonderful mom. Where'd she go? She was right down front, and she took off. But I'm thankful for my mom in the back. Yes, thank you, and I love you, mom, for all that you do, and all the moms in the room. Thank you, and God bless you. All right, let's have our mothers stand first. We're going to all stand, but moms, why don't you stand first? And let's give them a big round of applause there. Thank you very much for all you do. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of work. If the rest of the audience, you go ahead and stand with us, and we'll be dismissed this morning. And uh, we'll be back tonight for our evening service at 6 o'clock. Looking forward to that. I know we have uh, at least one getting baptized this evening, so come on out and bear witness to that as we encourage that step of obedience and then our good time of fellowship as well. And, uh, and then we have a couple things on the event calendar coming up in the, just the next couple weeks. For the ladies, you have a ladies refresher coming up. And, uh, and so you make note of the information there in your bulletin. Make sure you have that evening set aside. And so you're available to be a part of that. We'll get you more details regarding that. But looking forward to that, the first one of this year. And so ladies plan on being a part of that. And then also the beginning of June, the first, month of, or first week of June, is our Vacation Bible School. And uh, we're looking forward to that. So make sure that you have that time set aside. It is in the evenings. And so we do a 6.30 to 8 o'clock program. And uh, if you have young people, uh, first, uh, four and five-year-old all the way up to 12th grade will have something going on that whole time for all of those age groups. And so if you have children or grandchildren or kids in the neighborhood, spread the news and uh, let them know about our Vacation Bible School. Uh, also on the heels of that, it takes a lot of workers to make something like that happen. And so if you're willing to volunteer your time that week in the evening, Monday through Friday, there's a sign-up sheet out on the bulletin board, and you could sign up there. I believe that's it for this morning. We'll have a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Once again, mothers, happy Mother's Day. Father, we do thank you today, especially for our mothers and for those that have, uh, that have brought us into this world. And even as Pastor said, though the experiences vary, uh, we can be certainly thankful for how you've provided for us in that way. 
And so, Lord, I pray that today you would uh, help us to honor uh, those uh, mothers in our lives, Lord, those that uh, are worthy of being honored. Lord, may we take the time and show our appreciation to them. Lord, we do thank you for all that you've done here in the service this morning, the challenge from your word, and uh, Lord, the encouragement. I pray that we would uh, follow through and just stick by the stuff, even as the song said, to keep on the firing line. Lord, I do pray that you would bless our afternoon and bring us back safely this evening to once again gather in obedience to your word, fellowship one with another, and to hear from the Bible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.